welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be hosted to our website for you to watch later um, at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show how you can access all of our show archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the shows we have on Encompass Live. If you are not uh, in Nebraska, uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. Um, that would be similar to your state library. And so we provide services to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, museums, archives, historical societies, uh, anything and everything. Uh, really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Uh, something cool that libraries are doing, something we think they could be doing. Um, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes come on the show and talk about uh, programs and things that we're doing here through the commission, but we also bring on guest speakers, and as we have this morning. Uh, today with us is uh, Kim Guile. Good morning, Kim. Morning. Uh, she's just um, next door. Kansas, <laughs> Kansas City Public Library. Um, next, uh, and she is, this is a session that was done at uh, Internet Librarian previously. Yeah, with, with a couple of special modifications just for you. Yes, of course. <laughs> and that was a while ago too, that was last fall. Um, and um, it was one that was recommended to me by our technology innovation librarian, actually, um, Amanda Sweet. And um, I am a huge, um, supporter of Wikipedia. We've had other sessions on the show about their various Wikipedia related things. Um, I think it's a great resource. Uh, the crowdsourcing of it is an awesome and um, I use it uh, every day probably for something. <laughs> You're not the only one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so Kim's gonna talk about some cool thing they did at Kansas City Public Library, their Wikipedian in Residence program. So I'm just gonna hand it over to you to um, take it away and tell us all about it. Uh, well, thank you so much. I am so excited to be here and my family hails from Nebraska from many years ago from Tilden. So it's nice to be like Hi. back to <laughs> in a special way. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm here today to talk about public libraries and Wikipedia and how we can creatively collaborate together. So I'm Kim Guile. I am the director of branch services here at the Kansas City Public Library. That background there is our community bookshelf, which is also featured on our Wikipedia page. I have been in libraries working in every position that you can imagine, practically from shelving books to doing story times to writing comprehensive library master plans and building buildings to you know cleaning up trash. <laughs> it's all over the place, as we all do. Um, I've been in libraries. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, since 2001, I've been in libraries. And on Wikipedia, I am Casey Librarian. Um, so I know that this is not an interactive uh, platform where I can see everybody's hand raised, but just to kind of get a sense of the, the variety of audiences that we have, a lot of people read Wikipedia articles every single day or often, right? Mm -hmm. um, some people have edited Wikipedia. Some people have never edited Wikipedia at all, or they've only done it one time. Um, some people are just really um, interested in learning more about Wikipedia. They hear, they hear a lot about it, but they don't really know. It's kind of uh, intimidating or overwhelming. And some people just show up to things because I don't think <laughs> coming, and I am not above doing that. <laughs> so today, yeah, I've, I've, like I said, I use it almost every day. I've yeah. looked, I've never edited anything, I don't think but I've looked behind the scenes to see how that could work, but I've never oh, made I, that leap. I would be happy to show you. My, <laughs> you already have my email, but I'm gonna put my email in at the end of this. And then if anybody wants a quick lesson on how to edit, I'm happy to show you. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, so today, the content that I'm gonna cover is how we started this whole process with Wikipedia and learning about it how we jumped into programming using Wikipedia edit-a-thons, 
how we eventually figured out how to do a Wikipedia in residence. And then I'm going to invite you to join the open knowledge movement with me. So back in 2018, um, I was one of those people that I've heard nothing but bad things about Wikipedia, that it's not a reliable source of information. I was totally skeptical. And I realized, much to my frustration, that all of my patrons were using Wikipedia all the time to do their research, to start their projects, to uh, find basic information. And so I was like, okay, if I, if I know my patrons are using this, I need to know more about it. And so I went in to learn what the deal was with Wikipedia. And nine weeks later, I had totally drank the Kool-Aid. And um, on this slide, which I'll share with everybody later, that available here is a link to the content that you can review for yourself. And you, I came out of it with a great excitement for Wikipedia. And so why is Wikipedia such an amazing tool for both everybody in the world and for libraries? Well, number one, it's open access, which means it's free to everyone. Number two, it's crowdsourced. Anybody can edit. Uh, popularity, it is always fluctuating between the fifth and the 10th most visited website in the world, which is so significant. Um, size and scale, it is the largest encyclopedia that exists, and it is always growing. There are over 40 million articles that are within Wikipedia. It's also multilingual, so there are over 250 languages that are represented, which there are obviously more languages that we need to add, but 250 languages, is pretty that's a great start. And then it's open source, which means it is a collaborative tool that people can use. So within Wikipedia, there are these things called the Wikipedia pillars, which are the, the rules with Wikipedia. So neutral point of view means that you want to write and edit articles representing all significant views without bias, right? Um, we'll talk about that. Verifiability. We want to be able to verify using reliable sources, which with at least three different sources, which means you can double check this information and make sure that it's true. No originality, which means if you're writing a research paper, you can't publish your original research on Wikipedia. Uh, conflict of interest, you can't write about people you know or who pay you, your friends and relatives. And notability, you must be uh, visible and uh, recognized with them among at least three separate sources. So knowing that, neutrality and notability can be pretty problematic. Um, nothing can be completely neutral. That is just not something that human beings can do. So just acknowledging that. And then notability, um, notable according to who, right? Um, just because someone uh, is, is not written about with three uh, reliable resources doesn't mean that that person or that subject is not notable in a lot of communities and a lot of areas. So there's just a port important to acknowledge that. It's also really important that we acknowledge the gender and racial bias content gaps within Wikipedia. So I'm gonna read these quotes to you. Wikipedia estimates that 77% of their editors are white and 91% are men. So the Black Lunch Table is a US-based oral history archiving project that was founded back in 2005. And it focuses on the lives and works of black artists. And it includes oral archiving, salons, peer teaching workshops, meetups, and Wikipedia edit-a-thons. So it's a great resource. And then Art and Feminism, which is a, another community of activists that wants to close the information gaps related to gender and feminism and the arts. And they use Wikipedia as a uh, a springboard for that. And they say as of 2011, the Wikimedia Foundation uh, found that less than 10% of its contributors identify as female. So also acknowledging the gaps that we have within Wikipedia's rep representation. So with that said, I have all this information here. I decided I'm going to go like straight in and host Wikipedia edit thoughts. We jumped right into this program. Um, here are a couple of examples of the edit-a-thons that we did with, uh, we focused on Kansas City Jazz, we did some on, uh, with the National Library of Medicine, we've partnered with their uh, biannual site NLM edit-a-thons, we did a Kansas City Black History edit-a-thon, and then we also did one on Kansas City's philanthropy community, we're a really philanthropic community. So uh, at these events, we built community. 
uh, we had participants that were learning something new. We had people who would come in that have edited Wikipedia before and they knew exactly what to do. We had people coming in that didn't even have an email address, but they were passionate about these different subjects and they wanted to tell their stories and share Kansas City's story, right? Um, we added diversity to the editor demographics and the collections that we have highlighted within those edit-a-thons were made discoverable worldwide. So we talked earlier about how Wikipedia is consistently among the top five to 10 websites visited in the world. So imagine like, our local history room is the Missouri Valley Room where we keep all of our local history resources. Unless you come to Kansas City and you go to that room during the hours that we're open, you're never gonna find those resources, right? But at these edit-a-thons, we took those citation materials and then those citation materials go onto Wikipedia as citations. And then suddenly your collections that are normally either behind paywalls or behind physical doors, they become discoverable to everyone. Right, it's, so it's it's pretty exciting. Um, we were also very intentional to think creatively and out of the box. So, for example, the Jazz Wikipedia Editathon that we had, we hosted it at the American Jazz Museum. We had a live jazz band. We had drinks. Um, there's a local distillery here in Kansas City that's owned by a guy who is just a fabulous jazz fan. And so he said, "Yes, I will make you a signature cocktail for your Editathon." Um, so it's fun and interesting and. People who in the Wikipedia community that I talked to about this program, they're like, you did what? I was like, yeah, it was super fun. They're like, that sounds amazing. Um, uh, yeah, so it was just really fun. And then um, as we came into 2020, uh, you know, we had to pivot to some virtual edit-a-thons, which um, we, we ended up uh, hiring local topical experts and speakers for event introductions. We still continued our community partnerships and highlighting special collections um, and, and all of that. And we found that breakout rooms with virtual edit-a-thons are a really, really good thing. Um, just highlighting the creative partnerships that we have. Um, I already mentioned the Jazz Museum and Restless Spirits. We worked with the Knight Foundation. We worked with the local grocery store, with the Jazz Orchestra, with the Bruce R. Watkins Museum for our Black History Edit-a-thon. We had the Casey Auction Company that just found out about what we were doing and decided like, hey, I wanna participate somehow. Why don't I just sponsor the, the snacks that you guys have for your Black History Edit-a-thon? And so we were able to um, support a black caterer here in town. So it was just really fun how everything seems to come together. And then another important thing that I cannot emphasize enough that we often forget about within the world of libraries is we have to tell our own stories. We have to do things just like this, what I'm doing now, uh, to, to um, inspire people and to get other people interested in doing these kinds of things so we can grow the movement, right? So I also um, authored and co-authored several articles that were published, sometimes in unexpected spaces. So like, I have control over my own LinkedIn profile, right? So I wrote an article on LinkedIn and started there. Then um, we wrote an article for computers and libraries, which is eventually how I ended up presenting at Internet Librarian and yeah. in Casey Studio Magazine, which is a local arts magazine. Um, and, you know, it just publishing in uh, somewhat surprising ways is a really cool way to meet people where they are. And it sort of breaks down those barriers of communication. So, um, you know, we did all those edit-a-thons, we published stories and presented at conferences. So what is the next step? The next step, you know, go big or go home, right? We decided we wanted to look into getting a Wikipedian in residence. So first off, what even is a Wikipedian in residence? It is, a, a that person is a liaison between GLAM institutions. GLAM institution, GLAM is an acronym for galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. And that community um, is a, a, a gosh, they're, it's such a wonderful community of uh, information professionals that also very often will use Wikipedia and Wikimedia platforms to share information. 
um, a Wikipedian in residence will work to advocate uh, to advance the open knowledge project through Wikipedia editing and Wikimedia Commons entries and Wikidata, which we'll all talk about later. And then um, we looked at what other institutions were doing with their Wikipedians in residence. So me specifically, I looked at the Smithsonian and met Kelly Doyle there. Um, she uh, ended up being a mentor for our Edit, uh, for our Wikipedia in residence here in Kansas City. Um, I looked at the MoMA, we looked at the Philadelphia Free Public Library and other connections that we had within the Glam community to figure out how we could do it and what it would look like. And another important thing that we did was to collaborate and build buy-in and expectations internally. So a lot of it was explaining what even is a Wikipedia in residence um, why is it helpful for the Kansas City Public Library? What is the value there? And trying to explore what, you know, with the existing expertise and resources that we had here within the Kansas City Public Library, what could we use a Wikipedia and its residents for to elevate our collections and to teach people those information and media literacy skills? <clears throat> So our Missouri Valley Room is our local history that we talked about. Digital Branch is our website. We also have a couple of standalone history websites. We have Casey Black History. We have um, a couple of other ones as well, <laughs> which I can link to later. And then um, we have a philanthropy team that goes out and helps us raise money. We knew that we couldn't necessarily, well, we, we couldn't fund a full-time residency position without external support and so we engaged with our philanthropy team there um, we looked with our outreach and reference and tech access teams so outreach being we have subject specialists that do a lot of programming throughout the system with subject specialists like health and wellness and civic engagement and small business and entrepreneurship our reference team does the the um, more traditional research within libraries and teaching those information literacy skills and tech access is a team that we have that provides um, digital literacy training and access to technology and mobile devices that we can loan out to patrons. So when it comes to funding, what I did was I uh, created a proposal that we could scale up with, we wanted it to be a one-year residency, a three-year or a five-year residency. Again, that's based on what I learned from other institutions that had Wikipedians in residence. Um, we were able to fund a one-year residency through a private donor. Um, the WT, William T. Kemper Foundation funded $50,000, which is about 80% of what it costs to cover the salary. So the library covered the benefits, the technology, uh, conference travel, and we fully funded the last six months of the residency. We ended up making it a, an 18-month residency. And then we looked at um, other models to see what other funding sources might be available to us. There are other, like Canada can get a federal grant. We, we worked with a, a library in Canada that had federal grants that supported their Wikipedia programming. Um, depending on where you are in the world can depend on what kind of funding opportunities are available to you. And then the Wikimedia Foundation itself also has a lot of grant opportunities. Um, I have been uh, very fortunate enough to receive two Wikimedia Foundation scholarships to present at conferences. And it's, um, you know, it's one of those things where if you ask, you have to ask. And shockingly enough, when you ask, most often in this world, the answer is yes. So that's been, that's been really cool. And then in here, I put um, some of the details of how we posted the job and what we wanted out of the um, out of the Wikipedia and residence, just so you can share. So if you want to take screenshots of any of this, or I can email them to you. You might email us later on in the slide deck. Mm -hmm. So and I will mention too, while you're talking about that that we will have these slides available afterwards with the archive too. So yes. uh, those of you that don't, you know, don't have to try and write all this down. <laughs> this yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, and any links and, and resources and everything will be available afterwards when we get the um, recording up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so we looked at, we wanted this position to focus on Kansas City. Um, if you have ever been to Kansas City or know anybody from Kansas City, everybody in Kansas City thinks Kansas City is the greatest town and we love our city and our city loves us back. And it's just, a, we, are, we are incredibly proud of, of who we are and we're excited about um, Kansas City in general. So uh, come to Kansas City, you should come to Kansas City. 
Uh, so within Wikipedia, we wanted to focus on our history and our topics, our people, our stories, and engage both library staff and Wikipedia editors and the members of the public to make our digital, make our content digitized and more accessible, therefore, um, to everybody across the planet, and with an emphasis on underrepresented topics and editor demographics, because again, we acknowledge that there are those gaps within Wikipedia. And these, I'm gonna just kind of go over really quickly. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we engage with local editors within Kansas City and the Kansas City area. We wanted to basically establish, well, reinvigorate the Wiki Project Kansas City and the Wiki Meetup Kansas City, because those had been pretty stagnant for a long time within Wikipedia. Um, and any city, I was looking around in Nebraska to see what kind of Wiki, media, uh, Wiki meetups happen in Nebraska. You guys don't really have very much, so it's a really like cool opportunity to start. I haven't heard of anything, yeah. And I like I know, done yeah. some presentations on it, and I always share things about um, you know things like this. But um, yeah, I don't think we've had. I always encourage yeah. people to check your library and yeah. see, make sure it's correct in there if there is something in there because uh, you don't yeah. want. University of Nebraska Lincoln has done some things. Probably that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and uh, with an emphasis on gender inclusivity on Wikipedia, but uh, that's pretty much the only thing that I was able to find coming out of Nebraska. So it's something we need, to do. right? Um, we also wanted this person to share the stories, share the implementation process, present at conferences. We wanted them to. Um, improve Wikipedia entries themselves, write a white paper that outlines the story of how we were able to do this program, share lessons learned. There is a thing called the Wikipedian, Wikimedians in Residence Exchange Network, also called REN, W-R-E-N, that we had our uh, Wikipedian engaged in. Um, there's a GLAM newsletter that they could participate in. And then um, just teaching Wikipedia and media and information literacy skills. I also put in interview questions because it was um, kind of a struggle for us to figure out how, like, if, if you don't know Wikipedia and live and breathe Wikimedia in general, um, it's hard to figure out how do you even find a position to do this, right? So here are the interview questions that we asked for this, uh, for our candidates. And then um, hiring considerations for me and for us as a library, Within the world of Wikipedia, you have and, and Wikimedia at larger, there are a lot of people who have a great deal of technical expertise and they can, you know, write programs and do batch uploads and you know all kinds of things. And while those skills can be super helpful, it's more important for us in the public library Wikipedia and residence position to be able to do community engagement and get people excited and teach those skills, right? So we knew that. Um, and in our interview uh, pool, in our candidate pool, we had people with both. And so when we were looking at it, we realized the community engagement is something that was more important for us. And then um, for our interview panelists, it was very important that we create this buy-in for the, the position in general. We wanted it to be successful. And if you don't have internal buy-in, you're just creating unnecessary barriers, right? So we included people from our local history, Missouri Valley team. We included people from our digital branch on the interview panel, right? Um, we also, it was really important to us to embed equity into the job description duties, um, mm -hmm. acknowledging the gaps that are in Wikipedia, acknowledging that we wanted to be able to hire people um, regardless of their background. And we wanted, it was 20, 20 and 2021 when we were writing this and so we really needed to kind of like we were so excited about everything that we could do but we needed to be realistic about the programming that we could do during the pandemic so understanding that most of what we needed to do was going to be virtual and that just is what it was right so our wikipedian and residents they were excited because we were able to provide a remote remote and hybrid work environment for them. Um, we were very clear about posting the salary in the job description yeah, and the salary was a living wage. Um, it was a full-time benefited position. We did not require an MLS and um, have minimal degree requirements. And then um, from the Wikipedian, it was important for them that they had trust from me to 
basically do what they felt was the right thing to do and the best thing that they can do based on the expertise that they had. So we ended up with the first Wikipedian in residence at a public library in the entire United States. Yay. And that is Miranda Pratt. This is a self-portrait that they did of themselves. <laughs> and on Wikipedia, they are Chrysanthemum 123. So super excited that Miranda was able to um, successfully complete their residency. So within the Wikiverse, there are many platforms that we can, we and everybody could engage with. And the three that we chose um, to focus on primarily are Wikipedia, which is the free encyclopedia that we talk about and we're probably most familiar with, Wikimedia Commons, which is where you can put uh, copyright free and public domain uh, content including images, sounds, video clips, video clips. And then Wikidata is something that is sort of like an infrastructure that all of the other Wikiverse platforms kind of sit on. Um, and it is basically a piece, like one piece of data that you can input. So for example, if uh, you wanted to create a Wikidata entry for your library or for yourself, for example, you could have a Wikidata entry. And, um, it's, uh, it's kind of a cool concept. We can talk about that more later too, but those are the three platforms that we focused on. And I wanted to show you some of the sample programs that Miranda put together and some of the lessons learned that- I just uh, want to remind everyone too, if you do have any questions, uh, uh, go ahead and type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, Kim can answer anything about the, the process, um, how they did this, um, anything you want to know more about with how they, um, got their Wikipedia in residence or um, people using Wikipedia at the library. Um, so definitely type in uh, questions uh, when you think of them. No need to wait Absolutely. till the end. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for that reminder. Um, let's see. So some of the sample programs that we put together, that Miranda put together, uh, we did Wikipedia 101 workshops. These top two are linked with uh, YouTube videos. We recorded a couple of them. So we have examples that people can use for future programming as well. Um, Wikipedia history, context, and more, which is a very much an introduction of kind of like the um, the pillars that we talked about, the uh, the context as far as where the gender gaps are, where the racial gaps are, um, you know, gaps in things like oral histories because oral histories are passed down without necessarily documenting them. So if you don't have documentable sources that you can cite, that history can be lost. So like that kinds of history and context. Um, we did creating an account and editing. So that's like the, the very basics about, you know, if you wanna go in and edit an article, this is how you do it. Uploading images to Wikimedia Commons. Um, we had uh, our Wikipedian in residence, we bought them a camera and we, uh, Got them to go around and take pictures of landmarks within Kansas City and upload that content to Wikipedia as well. And then um, Wikipedia, or I'm sorry, Wikidata Basics, an introduction to Wikidata and all of those things. And then we also did edit-a-thons, right? Um, Wikimedia Meetups is another thing that Miranda did uh, where people with any skill set at all, even zero skill sets, uh, coming together to talk about Wikipedia, ask questions. Um, no, uh, <laughs> uh, no expectations really of, of you. So making it a very, very welcoming place. Um, we would do an introductory training for Wikipedia. We would meet monthly and it just started to create that community of editors within uh, Wikipedia within Kansas City. We also celebrated Wikipedia's birthday. So every January 15th is Wikipedia's birthday. It's called Wikipedia Day. And so this was just a fun day where we played the wiki game, which is a, there are lots of different games that you can play within Wikipedia, but one that is uh, pretty fun for us is where you use wiki links to get from one subject to a seemingly totally unrelated subject. Oh, yeah. And the only reason, yeah, the way that you can get there is by clicking, clicking the links within Wikipedia to get to different articles and different subjects. So that's fun. And whoever can get from one article to a different article in the shortest amount of time wins. And so we had uh, prizes that we bought from Depths of Wikipedia. If you are on Twitter or Instagram, follow Depths of Wikipedia. It's ran by this woman named Annie Rorerda. She is absolutely hilarious. And she just posts funny stuff that she finds and runs across within Wikipedia. 
Um, we also uh, had a lot of fun with internal opportunities for collaboration. So like I said, we have an outreach team that has subject specialists. We participated in Media Literacy Week in 2021, where this is linked and you'll see videos on our YouTube channel of all of the programs that we did for every day during Media Literacy Week. And two of those days were focused on Wikipedia. Um, we also created an open source zine that you'll see a picture there, this open source technology uh, and programming for artists. So as an entrepreneur, if you are an artist, it kind of talks you through the different open source softwares that there are that you can use for your own uh, business. And then we also help to support other internal projects like creating a zine library within the um, Kansas City Public Library, investigating and doing programming on intellectual property as a civil rights issue and community teachings. So before you hire a Wikipedian in residence, here are some things that you should know. Uh, conflict of interest is a thing. So the Wikipedian and residents cannot write or edit articles about people that pay them, including the library and the donors. So we were not able to ask our Wikipedian and residents to do any edits based on the Kansas City Public Library page or the W.T. Kemper Foundation or anybody from the Kemper family just because of that conflict of interest, right? Mm -hmm. It's also important to know and have a basic knowledge of copyright uh, because information and images and all of that we need to either obtain permission to share them or we need to have copyright free uh, things to post within Wikipedia and Wikidata and Commons. So making sure that you've got a basic understanding of what you can and cannot do and what the rules are is super helpful. Wikipedians and other glam workers within the community, um, having connections and establishing these connections within these communities is super helpful. Our, as I mentioned before, Kelly Doyle from the Smithsonian was a mentor for our Wikipedian and residents here in Kansas City, Miranda. We also use professional groups. There's uh, Facebook groups, there's chats on um, Telegram, there's the uh, REN network. There's lots of ways that you can engage if you look for them. And I will tell you the people within this community are very interested in sharing and helping and teaching. Um, they want to see this movement grow and grow and grow. There are conferences that you can go to and uh, the Wikimedia Foundation can provide scholarships for those things, as I mentioned before. We, uh, there's annual Wikimania conference, there's Wiki North America, there's the Wiki and Library User Group that just started, I think in 2022 was their first conference. And I think they're gonna do annual or biannual. Um, and then there's other learning opportunities. You can go to edit-a-thons that are virtual, that are all over the country. Um, you can do art and, femini art and feminism community hours in there, wiki meetups all over the place. Um, when we were measuring the success of our residency, we used something called the Wikimedia dashboard where we could track, you know, from this point in time to this point in time, here are all the articles that we edited and we wanna see how many, you know, how many citations did we add? How many Wikidata items did we add? How many times were these pages viewed? How much content, how many, you know, what was the word count that we added? You can measure all of that and use that as reporting for your success, which is great. Um, there are, uh, we also did surveys. So we did PLA's project outcome to find information and then just sharing the word at, at, at outreach events and trying to get people to come and engage was, was super helpful. Press and publicity, again, making sure that you are out there and you are sharing this story. We worked with our marketing team to get uh, the story out there and we did a blog post on our website, which is something that we share throughout our uh, library email newsletter. We were able to be on a few radio, sta uh, radio stations here on KCUR, which is our NPR affiliate here in Kansas City. We were on the pit. Uh, we had an article featured in the pitch, which is, which is another arts and music newspaper here in Kansas City, and then um, another article on KCUR that was written by Joey. Well, I like that that middle one there from the pitch. That that framing yeah. and that we, having the tools to edit our own stories. Yeah, like making it personal. Like, you know, this Absolutely. information that's out there in Wikipedia. Yeah, you you might not like it. You might. It might not be correct, and or you might know something that should be in there um, that people should so know right. about something. Yeah, 
that seems to be like I was saying before with the jazz editathon, we had, you know, we had so many people that were coming to this editathon who had no, like, not even email addresses, not used to using the computer, not used to doing anything, but they, they were so interested in telling their stories and um, making sure that these things weren't lost and that they were discoverable and shared with other people. Um, that seems to be the most powerful way that uh, we have uh, engaged people within this, within this movement. We also, Miranda created a zine hosting a Wikipedian in residence at a public library. And it outlines all like basically what you need to know if you want to host a Wikipedian in residence in a public library. And it's just, um, again, telling our story and hoping that we share our lessons learned and best practices with other people so that it can be replicated. And then we are still sharing the story. Um, before we got a Wikipedian in residence, I was at the Glam Wiki conference, which was in um, Israel again, from a scholarship from the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, I presented at MLA, the Missouri Library Association. We mm -hmm. have tried a couple of times to get uh, conference submissions for PLA accepted. We have not been successful yet, but we will keep trying. Uh, the WikiLibCon, which was in Dublin, Ireland, which also I received a scholarship to present there, which is fantastic. And then who would have ever thought that by me taking this nine week course back in 2018, that I would have been able to go to Israel and Ireland because of Wikipedia, yeah, Who knew? That's crazy. Yeah, that's it, awesome. It, it, <laughs> so wild. And then um, we presented at the Internet Librarian Conference most recently. And then I'm presenting today with you. So I encourage you to be bold. It is, this is like the one thing that you need to take away from this entire presentation. I don't care if it's Wikipedia related or not, but within the world of librarianship and as an information professional, be bold. Learn something new. Check things out share what you learn with your community. Um, and then I also invite you to join us. The next thing with librarianship that is happening is the One Lib, One Ref campaign. So I was just every year, up about that because I knew it was coming up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, every year, it's starting, what, in uh, like 10 days, five to 15 days. Um, yeah. One Lib, One Ref is a uh, biannual campaign where it challenges every librarian and information professional to add one citation to Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. So one librarian, one reference, citations needed, right? Um, join the Wikipedia and Libraries Facebook group, uh, join a meetup group within Wikipedia, just see how you can get um, involved and invited, or just simply check out that content on uh, Wikipedia and Libraries Better Together from OCLC. If you would like, there is further reading that you can do on the history and context application of Wikipedia. We've got some great resources here, and then we've got additional references and resources linked here for you to review if you would like to review those as well. That is the end of my slide deck. I am Kim Guile at kclibrary.org, and I would be absolutely delighted to share any information and answer any questions that you have. Yeah, awesome. So go ahead and just leave that slide up there. So we'll have that up here while we are having any questions. Um, yeah, if anybody does have any questions, go ahead and type into the question section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, anything more you want to know about, anything you missed, anything you want to... Uh, <coughs> Kim to go over um, again. Um, like I said at the beginning, I am a huge user of Wikipedia myself. Um, and I know it does sometimes, like you said before you went into that training, it can get a bad rap. And I unfortunately yeah. do still see people saying, um, you know, don't use Wikipedia. It's not, you can't use it as a resource. Right. Um, right. It's, right. you know, how do we know what's in there and everything? And and I, I oh, it just, uh, it grates me. It's, it's yeah, pet peeve of mine. Um, it's only as okay, good as we the have people to do who, that work to educate and right. to advocate, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's only as good as the people that um, edit it, and we can be those people. Um, or we can get other people who are the experts to be those people. And um, I do understand the don't copy and paste and uh, something in a Wikipedia article and put it into your paper for your school, you know, your <laughs> at all. Um, and it's not just, it, actually, I, I really appreciate that the beginning slide about all the rules, the, the pillars that I yeah. don't think, and I didn't know that, that I don't think people know. 
um, exactly. that there are rules. It is not just a free for all. <laughs> um, yeah, it makes a big difference to have like this sort of infrastructure and expectations. And mm -hmm. because it is open source and collaborative, that means that people do hold each other accountable to those rules. Yeah. And so oh, yeah. each article has a chat, like a talk page where you can go in and see what people are discussing. And you'll see like, Sometimes the conversation there, if you that is something that I've sometimes you talk about getting uh, caught up and you're going down that rabbit hole of click this link to this link to this article and now you're off on something completely different. But yeah. looking at that behind the scenes, the chat page about that particular page and the conversation, sometimes it can get pretty heated and, and it's very interesting. The different experts saying, well, actually, no, they didn't do that. This is what they did. Or actually, the real this story was this. Or here's the link to this the news article that talked about what happened. So we need to change this here. So it's very yeah looking at that is just so um enlightening yeah and I yeah it is and I think you know sometimes I, I will say bullying on Wikipedia like in those chat rooms can be a, a real thing um mm -hmm. but at the same time uh you know I'm not advocating for bullying but that the discussion like the healthy dialogue between two people or between the community really That's helps true. you uh to see that there there's a lot of people who approach this with a great deal of integrity and that they want to see quality information that is published on these platforms. Yeah, so it's, it's nice. And then there's also, you know, obviously there's going to be bad actors wherever it is that you go. And in the world of mis and disinformation, it's uh, it's it, it's a whole thing. But there mm -hmm. are a lot of mechanisms within Wikipedia to help combat that. So like there are certain pages, for example, that are just locked down because people will constantly go in. Like for example, Donald Trump's uh wikipedia page you can't just go in and edit his wikipedia page willy-nilly right um there are uh checks in place to make sure that people uh, wouldn't put bad information out there there are also things called bots that will go through and just automatically kind of uh troll and i i shouldn't say troll like it's not an internet troll but they will look at automated uh, they will automate automatically look at Wikipedia pages and, you know, do things like spell check corrections, or they will add where citations are needed, or they will do like small corrections just automatically. Um, and those, those are a really helpful tool. And those resources, those bots are um, monitored by like, there's a large group of Wikipedia administrators that there's kind people of people behind it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are people behind it that spend a lot of time and a lot of, you know, it, a lot of good faith effort to keep Wikipedia mm -hmm. a good thing. Yeah, I think those citations are are the the key to talking to people about how Wikipedia is not just chaos and bad information and and just whatever crazy things people want to put out there. You'll see all those citations in there, and everything has a link. Go to the bottom if you want to know. Well, is this really true? Is this a thing? Go to the yeah. bottom of any Wikipedia article. There are the links to the actual stories, the news reports, the magazine articles, the whatever that is the the, the backup, <laughs> the proof yeah. of what is being written in the article. So yeah. you know, there's it, it is. You can't just put whatever you want in there. Um, yeah. So and that's there, why we tell people that Wikipedia is actually a really terrific way to start your research. Exactly. Yes. You can go there and figure out, okay, here's all the citations. These are all the places that I need to go to. You need to find your primary resources for when you actually exactly. write your paper <laughs> um, for school or college or whatever. And those are at the bottom of the articles, but it is the place to start. Just like when you were in high school, in school, in elementary school or high school, you had to write a paper. What'd you do? You went to the encyclopedia sitting on the shelf and mm -hmm. you were told, don't rewrite that, but that just gets you the general idea of whatever the topic is, then go and find the primary sources. And before Wikipedia, that was painful. I did it. <laughs> So where's the article that tells me that this is what an armadillo actually does? I gotta go find that. <clears throat> now you can just click yep. and find it. <laughs> um, so I think, yeah. And and that the one live one ref that's coming up, I think this is perfect timing, and I didn't even think about that when we scheduled this, that yeah, that's one of the things that we as librarians should be doing. And um, that is one um, I had said we had done a session, a session about Wikipedia before, and we did do a, a particular a show about one live one ref um, 
it was actually back in 2017, but it's all still valid because it's still going on. Um, and I'm going to include links to that too. And it's done twice a year in January and May. Um, now you can do it at any time you want to, of course, if you sign up and just become an editor, but they kind of do these general push of librarians, you are the experts on the, you know the citations, you know where these resources are that can back up. And you, I'm sure everyone's seen articles in Wikipedia that says citation needed. Yep. That's what this is about. Somebody said, hey, this is the this is what happened, this is the, the thing, but I don't know the citation. I just know that that and so they need something that backs that up. So those are the things you go in and you add to it and fix it and and um make it better. Yeah. Um so questions we have here. Um someone wants to know a little more about the cost of this. You said you got funding um from a private donor and then the library did have to do theirs. Was um so this is a, a year, you, so you, you hit the also really that you did, you could, we're deciding between doing one, two or three years. So this was just a one year? Yeah, we ended up, uh, we were negotiating with our funder, uh, the W.T. Kemper Foundation, and they agreed to pay $50,000 for this one year right. residency. So we ha we established the salary as $50,000 and posted that salary. And then on top of that, the library, agree that we out of our budget would cover the benefits and the you know making sure that Miranda had a laptop and we knew that we wanted to send them to conferences and so we we did pay for the conference travel for Miranda and so on and so forth so there is you know obviously anytime there's a, a project like this there's going to be internal costs and overhead like you know managing the the grant that we got and doing the grant reporting that took some time as well so yeah but um we're we're really excited about it and the fact that it you know it was the first one in the country uh well, you know library, so yeah. that's so cool and exciting and you know at going back like we we did learn a lot then you know i i know that there are different things there are things that we would have done differently but i think um in order to get it started and and uh, begin the movement here in kansas city i, I i'm really proud of what we did yeah I, I you should be as you should be yeah um, have any other public libraries done this now? Do you know of in the, in the uh, United States? Within the United States, I have not heard of any yet. Um, I have had a few different libraries from Canada contact me mm -hmm. about how we did it because they are wanting to establish Wikipedians in residence. Um, but I have not heard of others within the United States that have done it yet. Well, this is, yours was just done, you said 2021, right? It was when. Yeah. Yeah, so we're only talking this one been like year. Yeah, I mean pandemic <laughs> time and everything else is just yeah. So yeah. I fully so, anticipate that it will be uh, more commonplace. Yeah, but there absolutely. there are Wikipedians and residents and other GLAM institutions within the country. So oh, right. library or, I'm sorry, uh within universities, academic libraries, museums, um, special libraries have Wikipedians and residents. So yeah. Yeah. And I know I think when I was looking at this from our session page for today's show. Yes, I link to the Wikipedian and residence site on Wikimedia. And I believe there's a list there you can look and see. Yes. Um, yeah, list of Wikipedians and residents. So you can see where they are. Yeah, that's the first looking at that. So if you're curious about someplace has it or you wanna see who has done it. Um, and if there's someone near you maybe that you wanna visit them. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so um so 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 Miranda was there just um for one year uh so someone wants to know are you thinking of doing this again having another you know some places have someone so and so in residence and there's a new person that comes in every year or every time there's always someone but it's a new like new artist in residence um is this something that you would consider doing again you know honestly i i would love to and since that one thing that is important about knowing with doing this work is you really need to have an internal champion, right? Somebody who is passionate about it, that wants to move it forward. Um, my job, since I started with the Wikipedian in residence into now, I have a different job within the library. And so mm -hmm. it doesn't really make a lot of sense for me to lead that initiative now. However, it is something like media literacy and information literacy is something that is going to be that has been and continues to grow as something that's critically important that we teach within our communities. And right. I truly believe that having a Wikipedian in residence is a great way to do that and sort of embed it in the work um, in a sort of uh, in kind of a clever way. 
So I would really like to see us continue this work. I think we need to work on um, alternate funding mechanisms. I think, honestly, it would be really lovely if we could just operationalize that cost and not have to look to outside funding for it. But I know that's going to be a heavy lift. Uh, but I think, you know, whenever you have things that are operationalized like that, instead of relying on outside funding, you have more control and you have um, more flexibility to do and be responsive to whatever it is that you need within the community. So that's something that I would like to do differently in the future, I think. Sure. Having a grant or someone to, to do it, to fund it just the first time is a good way to get your feet wet and figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, for, okay, now if we want to make this a permanent position on our staff or yeah. in our organization now we've figured all that all the all the all the de details out about that yeah yeah so we have uh subject specialists as i said uh within the library and we are you know if if we had a gajillion dollars and could do whatever we wanted i would love to see us create that information literacy specialist mm -hmm. that does this sort of programming um with a whole bunch, you know, there's there's so many other things that you can do with information literacy, but using Wikimedia as a tool to teach that as well mm -hmm. um, would be an, a really, job. yeah, yeah, it would be a wonderful ingredient in that entire, um, entire specialty. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. All right, that's all the questions that I see, that I've seen right now. Does anybody, we still have about five minutes left if anyone wants to get any last minute desperate questions in <laughs> right now to ask of Kim, uh, get them typed in there. Uh, there is her email address there that you are welcome to reach out to her there as well afterwards. Um, and as I said, these slides will be available afterwards, um, uh, should be by the end of the day tomorrow with our recording. So you'll have um, access to it there as well. Um, while I'm waiting to see if anyone else has any questions, I'm gonna pull presenter control back over to my screen so that I can show you some of the resources that we got here, where we got there. There we go, now it's up, all right. Move things out of the way here. So um, as I said, this is the session page for today's show. Um, and I do have, like I said, the link to the Wikipedia and in residence page, which I opened up over here. So you can see a lot more about it there. List of other places that do have them. Um, how to get started, how to get into this if you do want to do this at your library or your organization. Um, I mentioned that we did a previous session um, about the One Live, One Ref uh, initiative. So here is our Encompass Live website. Uh, if you use your search engine of choice and type in Encompass Live, so far we are the only thing on the internet called that. No one else is allowed to use our name. <laughs> We've been good with that since we started. <laughs> and you will come up with our main page here and our archive page. These are our coming shows, but right here at the bottom is a link to our archives. Uh, most recent ones at the top here. Today's show, as I mentioned, will be there, as I said, uh, by the end of the day tomorrow, as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. Um, we'll have a link to the recordings on the Library Commission's YouTube channel, a link to Kim's uh, slides. Um, and then what I think I'll also do is I'll link over to some uh, uh, the Wikipedia one that we did before. So I want to show you here, um, you can search our archives here. Um, you can search our full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you just want to make sure it's just something current. And that is because this is our full show archives, and I am not going to scroll all the way down. If you notice, this is a giant list. <laughs> um, Encompass Live premiered in January 2009. So we are in our 15th year, oh my gosh, um, of the show, and all of our show archives are here. They're all out on our YouTube channel. Um, so uh, just pay attention if you do watch any of our archive shows at the, um, you'll pay attention to the original broadcast date. It's on every entry. Um, some of the shows will be great and stand the test of time and some good, useful information. Some things become old and outdated. Um, resources may have changed drastically. Links might not work anymore. Uh, things might no longer exist anymore. People might not work at the same library they worked at when they presented for us. So uh, just do pay attention if you are watching any of our previous shows. So I'll show you here. I'm going to search for um, Wikipedia in our show archives to bring up that one. We did a show way, way back in 2013, but the one about the One Live Button Ref was just in 2017. And there's a link to the recording, um, a link to the One Live One Ref website, which I've opened up over here as well. 
And as I said, it's starting up again May 15th. So sign up and do it if you're a librarian. Um, adds, you know, fix some citations. And there are some, uh, there's a handout they gave, they provided, the recordings here too, but that can help you get started with doing um, uh, how to get started. Links to everything that if you want to do that um, at your library with your library staff, highly recommend it doing so. And I did over here follow. I looked up depths of Wikipedia. I had to, of course, on Twitter. <laughs> um, it looks like she also does like, like internet depths, uh, things that are just internet in general. And here's the first one, the most recent one. I love it. It's talking about what you're talking about uploading photos to Wikimedia. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. All right, so I don't see any other questions. That's fine. You all asked what you wanted to before. Perfect. Um, just some thank yous coming in um, from everyone. This is great information. Hopefully we'll get more libraries doing this. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. And please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to happy to have one-on-ones and do Zooms or I don't know, maybe we need to come. Maybe I need to come to Nebraska. So <sighs> let me know. know. We'll, do, we'll, we'll work on something maybe, yeah. <laughs> So um, that'll wrap it up for today's show. Thank you everybody for being here. Thank you so much, Kim. I'm glad you're able to do this. Um, Thank you, it's my pleasure. It was awesome, yeah. Um, as I said, we do um, have a recording. We do have a Facebook page, which I've got open over here. So if you do like to use Facebook, um, give us a like over there. We post reminders about the show. Here's a reminder to log into today's show. And then here is the announcement about related to uh, computers and libraries was our last week's show when the recording is available so um when today's recording is done we will post it up on our um facebook page and i'll push it out onto our twitter as well um so look there for um when it's announced everyone who attended today's show and registered today's show will also get an email from me letting you know when it's ready uh, we also use the hashtag a little abbreviation and live for anything about um encompass live so if you want to look for that and see what we've done um, there we go. Yeah. Uh, so as I said, that's it for today. Um, and I've got our upcoming shows here for the next couple of months, all filled in. Uh, next week, I will be your presenter <laughs> on Encompass Live. Uh, we are talking about the upcoming 2023 public library accreditation process. So if you are in Nebraska, if you are a Nebraska public library and you're interested in becoming accredited, or if you're up for renewal for your accreditation this year. Uh, sign up for next week's show. It'll be a little intro. The process starts July 1st. So this is a um, getting started um, session about that. Uh, we also, I also have later in the month four fuller workshops. This is like a quickie overview. But four, um, so I've got three, four three hour workshops scheduled um, later in May um, with a much more in depth. So you can sign up for one of those as well. There are four different workshops, but they are the same thing being presented each time, just at different times and dates so that everyone has a chance to find something that works for them. Um, there will be a recording of that provided later as well um, for anyone who can't attend the in person ones. So if you are looking to become accredited, um, sign up for next week's show and you'll have me here talking to you about it and do sign up for any of our other upcoming shows. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Kim. I think we are good uh, for today. Hopefully we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Thank you so much. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>